as twilight embraces the world and the stars begin to whisper their age-old secrets, let us journey together into a tale woven from the threads of magic, valor, and an unbreakable bond of friendship. Tonight on our channel dedicated to stories that cradle you into slumber, we present The Night's Dawn, a story set in the radiant kingdom of Evershade, where joy and prosperity bloom under the watchful care of its noble rulers and their beloved daughter, Princess Lillian. In this tranquil realm, where gardens flourish and laughter echoes, a shadow looms, casting a spell of forgetfulness that threatens to unravel the very fabric of joy. Yet, amid despair, a beacon of hope shines forth in Sir Cedric, a knight whose loyalty and love for Princess Lillian kindle a light strong enough to pierce through the darkest curse. As you settle into the comfort of your bed, let the warmth of Evershade's sun-kissed meadows and the courage of a knight determined to defy fate envelop you. Close your eyes and breathe deeply, allowing the melody of this tale to guide you into a realm of dreams, where forgotten memories bloom anew and the dawn brings promises of renewal and hope. Let the story of the night's dawn be the lullaby that carries you gently into a night of peaceful slumber, where dreams await to unfold in the embrace of night's tender hold. Welcome to the journey, and may it lead you to the serene shores of restful sleep. Chapter 1 The Enchanted Slumber In the heart of a land where the sun kissed the earth with a warmth that whispered of endless summers lay the kingdom of Evershade. This realm, abundant in joy and prosperity, was shielded under the benevolent watch of its rulers, King Alaric and Queen Elara. Their daughter, Princess Lillian, was the jewel of the kingdom cherished by all for her grace and kindness. Evershade was a mosaic of blooming gardens, crystal clear streams and towering castles with laughter and music weaving through its cobblestone streets. The people lived in harmony, their lives intertwined with the rhythms of nature and the seasons. Princess Lillian, with her radiant smile and gentle heart, roamed the gardens and halls, her laughter a melody that lifted the spirits of all who heard it. She had a love for the simple wonders of her kingdom, from the dew-kissed roses at dawn to the twinkling stars that danced above the castle's spires at night. Yet, beneath the tranquility of Evershade, a shadow began to stir. A whisper of a curse, long forgotten, crept through the wildwoods that bordered the kingdom. It was a harbinger of change, a note of discord in the symphony of peace that Evershade had long enjoyed. On the eve of the harvest moon, a celebration like no other was held in Evershade. The kingdom glowed under a tapestry of lanterns and the air was filled with the scent of autumnal feasts and the sound of jubilant songs. Princess Lillian, adorned in a gown that mirrored the night sky, danced among her people, her joy infectious, her spirit a beacon of light. Yet as the moon reached its zenith, a chilling wind whispered through the festivities, extinguishing lanterns and dimming the stars above. From the shadows of the wildwood, a figure emerged, cloaked in darkness, her eyes glowing with the malevolent light. The witch of the wildwood, a creature of myth, had stepped into the realm of man, bearing a grudge as ancient as the stars. Stop with a voice that twisted the air and a gaze that froze the heart, she spoke a curse upon Princess Lillian. By the moon's wane, you shall forget the essence of who you are 
each night anew until the cycle of the moon is no more. And with these words, a darkness enveloped Lillian, seeping into her soul. The kingdom fell into despair as the curse took hold. Each morning, Princess Lillian awoke with no memory of her name, her family, or her place in the world. The vibrant spirit that had filled the halls of Evershade with laughter was now shrouded in confusion and fear. King Alaric and Queen Elara, with hearts heavy and minds fraught with worry, sought the counsel of wise men and women, magicians and mystics. Yet none could lift the curse that had ensnared their beloved daughter. The Witch of the Wildwood, known to the ancients as Marana, was a being entwined with the very fabric of the forest. Her power drawn from the deep roots and ancient magics of the land was formidable. Yet her heart was a fortress of ice, her soul a chasm of shadows for she had been wronged by the ancestors of Evershade, her name erased from the annals of history, her legacy turned to dust. Murana's curse on Princess Lillian was not born of mere malice, but a desire for retribution, a yearning to reclaim what had been lost, to remind the kingdom of the power it had once scorned. The spell she cast was one of her own design, a complex weaving of magic that bound Lillian's memory to the cycles of the moon, a reflection of Murana's own ties to the natural world. In the depths of the Wildwood, Murana watched the turmoil of Evershade with a cold satisfaction, believing her quest for vengeance was nearing its end. Yet, within her, a flicker of doubt remained, a question of whether the price of her retribution was too high, even for those who had forgotten her. Within the heart of Evershade's despair, a beacon of hope emerged in the form of Sir Cedric, a knight of unparalleled valour and loyalty. Cedric had grown alongside Princess Lillian, their friendship a tapestry of shared adventures and whispered secrets. To Cedric, Lillian was more than royalty. She was a sister of his heart, a kindred spirit whose laughter had been the soundtrack of his happiest memories. Upon learning of the curse that had ensnared Lillian, Sir Cedric was stricken with a grief that pierced the very marrow of his bones. Yet, within this chasm of despair, a resolve as steadfast as the mountains took root, he approached the king and queen kneeling before them in the grand hall, his voice steady, his determination clear. I pledge my sword and my soul to Princess Lillian's cause, he declared, the echoes of his vow filling the silence of the hall. I shall remind her of her essence with each dawn, standing by her side until the curse is broken. This I swear upon my honour and my life. King Alaric and Queen Alara, moved by Sir Cedric's unwavering commitment, bestowed upon him their blessing. From that day forth, Cedric became Lillian's guardian, her guide through the fog of forgetfulness that shrouded her mourning. The following dawn marked the beginning of Cedric's vow. As the first light of the sun crept into Lillian's chambers, Cedric was there, a tome of Evershade's history in hand, and a heart full of stories that spanned a lifetime of friendship. With patience born of true devotion, Cedric recounted tales of Lillian's childhood, of days spent roaming the gardens and nights under the starlit sky. He spoke of her kindness, her strength, and the love that the people of Evershade held for their princess. Slowly, the confusion in Lillian's eyes gave way to sparks of recognition, fleeting moments of clarity that shone like stars in the night. Though the curse veiled her memories anew with each passing night, 
Cedric's presence each morning became a lighthouse guiding her back to herself. As days melded into weeks, it became evident that the curse was woven with threads of magic far more intricate than anyone had anticipated. Each morning, Sir Cedric's task grew more challenging, for not only did the curse erase Lillian's memories, but it also began to weave illusions, shadows of doubt that threatened to engulf her very soul. Desperate to find a solution, King Alaric dispatched messengers to the farthest corners of the realm and beyond, seeking anyone or anything that could break Murana's spell. Meanwhile, Cedric delved into ancient texts and forbidden lore, seeking a crack in the curse's armor, a way to shield Lillian from its ever-tightening grasp. Amidst this battle against darkness, the bond between Lillian and Cedric deepened, forged in the crucible of adversity. He became her constant, her reminder that beyond the curse's shadow, a world of love and hope awaited. And so, the first chapter of their story closed, with the heroes standing firm against the tide of darkness, their hearts alight with the determination to reclaim the light that the curse had stolen from the kingdom of Evershade. This concludes the first chapter of The Night's Dawn, where the stage is set for an epic journey of courage, friendship, and the unyielding search for light in the darkest of times. Let us prepare to journey onward with Sir Cedric as he embarks on a quest that will lead him through perilous lands, guided by the strength of his vow and the hope of a kingdom resting upon his shoulders. Chapter 2 Quest for the Sunrise As the struggle to break the spell woven by the Witch of the Wildwood continued, Sir Cedric's determination to restore Princess Lillian's memory remained unshaken. With each day's dawn, hope was both lost and found anew in the eyes of the princess. It was upon a morning tinged with the silver of despair that a new path unfolded before them. Guided by whispers of ancient lore and the desperate pleas of King Alaric and Queen Ilara, Sir Cedric sought the counsel of the Oracle of Eldoria, a being whose wisdom was said to eclipse the ages. The journey to the Oracle was fraught with peril, through lands that whispered of forgotten magic and shadows that moved with intent. Yet, Sir Cedric's resolve was a flame that darkness could not smother. Upon reaching the Oracle's sanctum, Nestled within the heart of a grove where light danced with time, Sir Cedric presented his plea with a heart heavy yet hopeful. The oracle, an ethereal figure shrouded in veils of starlight, listened with a silence that stretched across the tapestry of fate. In a voice that was the echo of the cosmos, the oracle spoke. The curse that binds the princess is not of this realm, but tethered to the cycles of the moon and the very essence of memory and identity. To break such a spell, you must seek the dawnflower, a bloom of purest light that opens its petals to the first rays of the fifth sunrise of the month. This flower grows only in a place untouched by darkness, where shadows fear to tread. The revelation was a beacon of hope in the enduring night. The dawnflower, an emblem of new beginnings and the rebirth of day, held the key to unraveling the complex magic that ensnared Princess Lillian. Yet, the oracle's words were a riddle wrapped in mystery. Where is this place that has never known darkness? Sir Cedric inquired, his mind a storm of questions. The answer lies not in the compass of the world, but in the heart of the seeker. Look to where light resides. Even in the deepest night, the oracle responded, her words fading like a dream upon waking. 
With a heart emboldened by the oracle's wisdom, Sir Cedric took leave of the groom, the quest for the dawnflower burning bright before him. The path was uncertain, and the journey promised to test the limits of his courage and resolve. Yet, within him, a conviction grew, a belief that the light of hope, once kindled, could never be extinguished. As Sir Cedric set forth from the sanctum of the Oracle of Eldoria, his spirit was a tapestry of determination, woven with threads of loyalty, friendship, and an unwavering commitment to restore Princess Lillian to her rightful self. The quest for the sunrise had begun, and with it, a chapter of adventure, magic, and the relentless pursuit of light in the shadow's embrace. With the wisdom of the Oracle of Eldoria etched upon his heart, Sir Cedric embarked upon his quest under a sky painted with the hues of dawn. The kingdom of Evershade, with its towers and gardens bathed in the golden light of morning, seemed to hold its breath, as if aware of the gravity of the journey that lay ahead. The king and queen, alongside the courtiers and common folk, gathered to bid farewell to their champion. Sir Cedric, mounted upon his steed, a noble creature as loyal and brave as its rider, bowed before them. With the light of Evershade guiding me, I shall return with the Dawnflower and free Princess Lillian from her curse. He vowed, his voice a beacon of resolve amidst the sea of hopeful faces. Armed with the blessings of his kingdom and a satchel filled with provisions and ancient texts, Cedric ventured beyond the familiar borders of Evershade into the realms of the unknown. His path was a tapestry of diverse landscapes, from verdant forests echoing with the songs of unseen creatures to barren lands where the wind whispered tales of forgotten magic. The journey was perilous, fraught with challenges that tested not only Cedric's prowess as a knight, but also the strength of his spirit. Bandits lurking in the shadows of towering trees sought to waylay travelers, their hearts darkened by greed. Yet Cedric's sword was swift and true, his resolve unshaken by the spectre of danger. For each adversary he faced, he carried the light of Evershade, a reminder of the love and hope that awaited his return. Beyond the reach of man's dominion, the natural world posed its own trials. Raging rivers and treacherous mountains stood as guardians between Cedric and his quest's end. Each step forward was a testament to his unwavering commitment. Each milestone a victory in the face of adversity. As days melded into nights, Cedric found solace in the solitude of his journey. The stars above became his companions, their consolations stories woven into the fabric of the night. In moments of doubt, he would recall the oracle's words, look to where light resides, even in the deepest night. These words were a balm to his weary soul, a reminder that even in darkness there existed a promise of dawn. With each sunrise, Cedric's resolve was renewed. The quest for the dawn flower, a journey fraught with danger and draped in the unknown, was also a journey inward, a test of the strength of his heart and the depth of his devotion to Princess Lillian and the kingdom of Evershade. Thus, Sir Cedric pressed onward, guided by the light of hope and the unwavering belief that love, in its purest form, could conquer the darkest of spells. The journey to find the Dawnflower was but the beginning of an epic tale, a chapter in the legend of Evershade that would be told for generations to come. As Sir Cedric's journey unfolded beneath the canopy of an ever-changing sky, he encountered the threshold of the Forest of Whispers, 
a realm whispered about in the tales of old, where the boundary between reality and illusion blurred like the morning mist. The forest, alive with the ancient magic of the land, greeted Cedric with a silence so profound it seemed to echo. With each step he took, the underbrush rustled with unseen creatures, and the trees, towering sentinels of wood and leaf, seemed to lean closer, their branches whispering secrets in a language lost to time. It wasn't long before Cedric realised that the Forest of Whispers was no ordinary woodland. It was a labyrinth of enchantment and deceit, where shadows danced at the corner of one's eye, and voices, soft as silk and sharp as thorns, sought to ensnare his will with doubts. You will never find the dawn flower, they murmured, weaving words like webs. Turn back, brave knight, for your quest is folly, and your hopes are naught but dreams. Yet, it was in the heart of this ensorcelled forest that Cedric's faith in Princess Lillian became his guiding star. With each whisper of doubt, he countered with the memory of Lillian's strength and kindness her laughter that could brighten the darkest of days. These recollections were beacons of light that pierced through the fabric of the forest's illusions. Amidst the trials of the forest of whispers, Cedric encountered creatures both wondrous and wary. There were the lumini, ethereal beings of light that fluttered through the night, their glow a reprieve from the pressing darkness. In their silent company, Cedric found solace, and in return, he offered them stories of the world beyond the forest, of Evershade and its princess. But not all encounters were benign. Shadows that hungered for the warmth of life lurked in the depths of the forest, their forms shifting, ever elusive. It was here that Cedric's prowess as a knight was tested, his sword cleaving through deception and fear, each battle a step closer to understanding the true nature of courage. The Forest of Whispers was both a crucible and a cathedral, a place of testing and revelation. Within its bounds, Cedric came to realise that true bravery was not the absence of fear, but the will to move forward despite it. The voices of doubt, once harbingers of despair, became mere whispers in the wind, powerless against the strength of his conviction. As he navigated the labyrinthine paths, guided by the unwavering light of his faith in Lillian, Cedric emerged from the forest transformed. The trials he faced within its embrace had forged him anew, his resolve tempered like steel in the fire of adversity. Beyond the veil of whispers and shadows, the forest relinquished its hold, the path ahead clear and bathed in the gentle light of dawn. The forest of whispers, with its enchantments and trials, was a memory etched in the fabric of Cedric's soul, a testament to his journey and the power of unwavering faith. Emerging from the shadowed embrace of the forest of whispers, Sir Cedric found himself before the tranquil expanse of the Lake of Reflection. This mystical body of water nestled in a clearing where the trees bowed in reverence, shimmered under the caress of the sun, its surface a mirror to the soul of the world. Legend spoke of the lake as a gateway to one's innermost self a place where the heart's silent whispers echoed with the clarity of a bell. It was said that the lake held the power to reveal truths hidden deep within, to reflect not the face, but the essence of those who dared gaze into its depths. With the heart braced for the trials ahead, Cedric approached the water's edge, the soft murmur of the lake a gentle invitation. As he peered into the lake, the surface stilled, 
transforming into a canvas that bore the images of his deepest fears. He saw Evershade shrouded in darkness, its beauty withered, its people lost to despair. He saw Princess Lillian, her spirit dimmed, trapped in an endless cycle of forgetting, a prisoner within her own mind. And deeper still, he saw himself, his resolve crumbling, his quest for the Dawnflower a journey ending in failure. The visions, reflections of Cedric's fears, threatened to drown him in doubt. The weight of the potential loss of his failure to save Lillian and Evershade pressed down with a force that stole the breath from his lungs. But in the depths of despair, a spark ignited within Cedric's heart. A spark of defiance, of unwavering determination. Drawing upon the memories of his bond with Lillian, of the laughter and light they shared, Cedric confronted his fears. He recognized them as the shadows they were, illusions born from the depths of his love and his duty. With each fear he faced, Cedric found strength, his resolve hardening into a shield against the darkness. As the last of his fears dissolved into the ether, the lake of reflection stilled once more, its surface clear as crystal. And there, in the depths of the lake, a vision unfolded, a bloom of radiant light. The dawnflower, nestled in a grove where no shadow dared to tread, its location revealed to Cedric by the lake's ancient magic. With a heart lighter yet filled with purpose, Cedric memorized the path the lake had shown him. The location of the dawnflower etched upon his soul. He understood now that the journey to the flower was not just a quest through the lands of the world, but a journey through the landscapes of the heart. Grateful for the wisdom granted by the Lake of Reflection, Cedric offered a silent vow to its mystical waters, a vow to return with the Dawnflower and restore the light to Princess Lillian's eyes, to Evershade, and to all who dwelled within its borders. As he turned from the lake, the path ahead illuminated by the clarity of his purpose, Cedric knew that the trials he had faced had prepared him for what was to come. The lake of reflection had shown him the strength of his own spirit, a strength that would guide him through the remainder of his quest. The path to the Dawnflower was a tapestry of wonders, woven with threads of magic and moments of serendipity. As Sir Cedric journeyed forth, the world around him seemed to awaken, revealing the hidden magic that danced at the edges of reality. It was in this realm of enchantment that Cedric found allies in the most unexpected of forms, beings touched by magic, who would guide and protect him on his quest. The first of these encounters was with a dragon, a creature of legend, whose scales shimmered like the night sky filled with stars. Unlike the fearsome beasts of lore, this dragon bore a wisdom as ancient as the earth itself and a heart kindled with a benevolent fire. The dragon, sensing the purity of Cedric's quest, offered him counsel, speaking of the delicate balance between light and shadow and the strength found in facing one's fears with courage. Brave knight, the dragon intoned, its voice a melody of wind and flame. Your journey is a testament to the light that dwells within you. Remember, even in the deepest darkness, your light can shine forth, a beacon to guide you to your heart's desire. Grateful for the dragon's wisdom, Cedric pressed onward, his resolve strengthened by the encounter. It was not long before the tapestry of his journey was enriched by another thread of magic. A band of fairies that danced upon the air, their wings aglow with the hues of dawn. With the these fairies, 
mischievous yet kind-hearted, were guardians of the grove through which Cedric now travelled. They had seen the shadows that crept at the edges of the world and recognised the valour of those who sought to stand against them. With laughter like the tinkling of bells, they flitted around Cedric, weaving a protective enchantment that would shield him from the lesser magics that sought to hinder his path. Courageous traveller, they sang, their voices a chorus of light and warmth. Let our magic be your cloak, a shield against the darkness. The road to the Dawnflower is fraught with peril, but know that you do not walk it alone. Touched by their kindness, Cedric felt a sense of camaraderie with these magical beings, a bond forged in the shared desire to see the light triumph over shadow. The fairies, with their laughter and light, reminded him of the joy that awaited Evershade's return to peace and the promise of a dawn unmarred by the curse. With the dragon's wisdom in his heart and the fairy's enchantment as his guard, Cedric journeyed deeper into the realm of magic. Each step took him closer to the Dawnflower, and with each encounter, the tapestry of his quest grew richer, a story of courage, friendship, and the indomitable spirit of those who walk in the light. As Cedric moved forward, guided by the magic that had touched his path, he realised that his journey was a reflection of the world's complexity. A world where light and shadow, fear and courage, despair and hope danced in an eternal embrace. With each being he met, each challenge he overcame, Cedric's understanding of his quest deepened, his resolve tempered in the forge of experience. Guided by the wisdom of dragons and the light of fairies, Sir Cedric's journey led him to the threshold of a place long whispered about in the legends of Evershade, the Archive of the Ancients. Hidden amongst the embrace of nature, where vines caressed stone and light filtered through the canopy to illuminate the forgotten, lay the ruins of an ancient library, a sanctuary of knowledge that had witnessed the turning of ages. As Cedric stepped through the moss-covered archways, a sense of awe enveloped him. Here, amidst the silence of crumbling columns and shattered glass, lay the collective wisdom of civilizations long past. The air was thick with the scent of old parchment and the weight of untold stories. Each whisper of the wind, a voice from history, beckoning him deeper into the heart of the archive. With reverent steps, Cedric explored the ruins, his hands brushing against the spines of weathered tomes and scrolls, each a vessel of ancient magics and forgotten lore. It was in the depths of this sanctuary, beneath the roots of an ancient tree that had claimed the centre of the library as its own, that Cedric found what he had been seeking, the last piece of the puzzle that would lead him to the Dawnflower. Encased in a beam of light that seemed to pierce the very heavens, lay a tome bound in leather that shimmered with an ethereal glow. As Cedric approached, the tome opened of its own accord, its pages fluttering until they rested on a passage that spoke of the grove of the first light, a sacred place where darkness had never dared to tread. It was here the tome revealed that the dawnflower bloomed, basking in the eternal embrace of the sun's first rays. The words on the page danced before Cedric's eyes, a map woven with magic, guiding him to the grove. With a heart alight with purpose, Cedric committed the path to memory, the location of the dawnflower now clear in his mind. The archive of the ancients, in its silent guardianship of the past, 
had bestowed upon him the key to unlocking the future. Armed with this newfound knowledge, Cedric prepared to leave the ruins behind. Yet, as he turned to depart, a voice, ancient and rich with the wisdom of the ages, spoke. Brave seeker of light, let the knowledge you have found here illuminate your path. Remember, it is not just the destination that shapes us, but the journey. With these words echoing in his heart, Cedric stepped out of the archive, the ruins fading into the embrace of the forest once more. The journey to the Grove of the First Light lay before him, a path illuminated by the sacrifices and wisdom of those who had walked before. The archive of the ancients, with its whispers of the past, had strengthened his resolve, reminding him that he was a part of a story much greater than his own. As Sir Cedric set forth towards the final leg of his quest, the dawn of a new day painted the sky with hues of hope. The journey to the Dawnflower, filled with trials and magic, had prepared him for the challenges that awaited. With the location of the flower now revealed, Cedric was one step closer to breaking the spell that had ensnared Princess Lillian and casting away the shadows that threatened the kingdom of Evershade. The quest for the sunrise was nearing its end, but the true test of courage and heart lay just beyond the horizon where the light of the dawn flower awaited. A beacon of hope in the breaking dawn. This concludes the second chapter of The Night's Dawn, where Sir Cedric, armed with the knowledge and magic of ancient and enchanted beings, prepares to face the ultimate challenge. With the dawn on the horizon, the stage is set for the final act, a testament to the power of courage, love, and the relentless pursuit of light in the darkness. Let us prepare for the breaking of the spell as the tale weaves towards its momentous climax. Chapter 3 Breaking the Spell With the ancient wisdom of the Archive of the Ancients guiding his steps, Sir Cedric embarked on the final leg of his journey a path that would lead him to the Grove of the First Light, atop a mountain where the sun's embrace was eternal, untouched by shadow. It was here, amidst the sacred tranquility of nature, that the Dawnflower awaited, its bloom a symbol of hope and renewal, the key to breaking the spell that held Princess Lillian in its grasp. The mountain, known to those few who dared whisper its name, was Veilcrest, a pinnacle that pierced the heavens, shrouded in legend and protected by the witch Marana's dark magics. It was said that no one had ever reached its summit and returned to tell the tale, for the witch had woven a tapestry of spells and set her minions to guard the path, ensuring the Dawnflower remained untouched its power sealed away. Undaunted by the legends and the trials that lay ahead, Cedric pressed onward, his heart fueled by the promise of dawn and the love he bore for his kingdom and its princess. The ascent was arduous, each step a battle against both the elements and the witch's minions, shadowy figures that emerged from the mist their forms blurred between reality and nightmare. Yet, for every shadow that rose to meet him, Cedric's resolve shone brighter. His sword, a light with the magic bestowed upon him by the encounters of his journey, cut through the darkness, each stroke a testament to his courage and his unwavering quest for the light. As Cedric climbed higher, the air grew thin, and the sky took on the hue of twilight, a canvas of purples and blues that stretched into eternity. It was within this ethereal landscape 
that Cedric finally beheld the grove of the first light, a sanctuary untouched by time, where the air shimmered with the essence of dawn. At the heart of the grove, bathed in the eternal light of the first sunrise, stood the dawnflower. Its petals glowed with an inner light, a soft radiance that seemed to pulse in rhythm with the very heartbeat of the world. The flower was as beautiful as it was rare, its presence a balm to Cedric's weary soul. Yet, as he approached, Cedric realized that the final test lay before him. Marana's spells, woven with the threads of shadow and malice, encircled the dawnflower, a barrier that defied entrance. And from the shadows, the witch's most formidable minion emerged a guardian crafted from the darkness itself, its form a swirling mass of night and terror. The battle that ensued was epic, a clash of light and darkness, of hope against despair. Cedric, with every ounce of skill and magic at his disposal, fought with a valor that echoed the heroes of old. The guardian, though fearsome in its might, could not withstand the purity of Cedric's purpose, the strength of his heart fueled by the countless encounters and trials he had overcome. With a final, decisive blow, the Guardian dissolved into the ether, its form scattering like shadows at dawn. The spells that guarded the dawnflower shattered, the barriers falling away like mist under the morning sun. Breathless and triumphant, Cedric approached the dawnflower, its radiance washing over him, a warmth that spoke of endings and beginnings, with a reverence born of the journey that had led him to this moment. Cedric carefully harvested the bloom, its light a promise in the palm of his hand. The dawnflower's bloom marked not just the culmination of Cedric's quest, but the turning of a page in the tale of Evershade. A moment when the darkness that had shrouded the kingdom began to recede, heralding the approach of a new dawn. With the dawnflower's ethereal bloom cradled gently in his grasp, Sir Cedric made haste down the slopes of Valecrest, the mountain that had borne witness to his valor and determination the journey back to Evershade was fraught with anticipation, each step bringing him closer to the fulfillment of his quest and the hope of a new dawn for the kingdom and for Princess Lillian. Upon his return, the castle, a sentinel of stone and history, stood bathed in the soft light of the waning day, its battlements silhouetted against the twilight sky. The people of Evershade, who had awaited with bated breath the outcome of Cedric's journey, greeted him with a chorus of joy and relief, their voices a tapestry of hope and celebration. King Alaric and Queen Alara, with hearts heavy with worry yet alight with hope, welcomed Cedric with open arms, their eyes reflecting the depth of their gratitude. The Dawnflower, a bloom of unparalleled beauty and magic was presented to the royal court, its radiance casting a glow that seemed to push back the shadows that had lingered in the corners of the hall. The ritual of remembrance, a ceremony of ancient magic and profound connection, was prepared with utmost care. The castle's grandest chamber was transformed into a sanctuary of light, with candles flickering like stars in the night, encircling the space where the ritual would take place. At its heart, a pedestal awaited, upon which the dawnflower would rest, its light a beacon calling forth the essence of memory and identity. Princess Lillian, her eyes wide with wonder, and the flicker of recognition that danced at the edge of her consciousness was led to the center of the chamber. Around her, the royal mages, guardians of Evershade's most sacred and ancient magics, began the incantations that would weave the magic of the dawnflower 
into the very fabric of Lillian's being. Sir Cedric, standing steadfast by Lillian's side, held her hand, a silent vow of protection and friendship. As the mages chanted, their voices rising and falling in a melody of power and promise, the dawnflower began to glow, its light pulsing in rhythm with the heartbeats of all present. The air in the chamber thickened, charged with magic as the essence of the dawnflower merged with Lillian's spirit. Visions of her life, moments of joy and sorrow, strength and beauty, danced in the air around her, a kaleidoscope of memories that had been torn from her by the curse. With each memory that returned, Lillian's eyes sparkled with a greater clarity, a light returning to them that had been dimmed by the witch's dark spell. Laughter and tears mingled in the chamber as those who loved her watched the princess reclaim the pieces of herself that had been lost. And then... As the final incantation was spoken, a silence fell upon the chamber, profound and complete. The dawnflower, its purpose fulfilled, gently wilted, its light fading into the ether, leaving behind a glow that lingered in Lillian's eyes. Princess Lillian, with a gasp that was a breath of new life, looked around the chamber, her gaze meeting Cedric's. In that moment, there was no need for words, for the bond they shared, forged in the crucible of trials and quests, spoke volumes. Cedric, she whispered, her voice the melody of dawn, I remember. The ritual of remembrance was complete, a testament to the power of love, friendship, and the indomitable spirit of those who dare to stand against the darkness. Princess Lillian stood renewed, her memories a tapestry of light that no shadow could dim. In the wake of the ritual of remembrance, as the kingdom of Evershade reveled in the return of Princess Lillian's memories, a shadow fell upon the land. The witch Marana, her senses attuned to the ebb and flow of magic across the realm, felt the weakening of her spell. With a heart blackened by centuries of bitterness and a desire for vengeance that knew no bounds, she marshaled her forces, dark entities born from the deepest shadows, for a final assault on Evershade. The kingdom, still basking in the light of hope's return, was suddenly thrust into the moor of darkness as Marana's forces descended upon it. The air grew cold, and the sky darkened, as if the very sun had been swallowed by the witch's malice. But Evershade was not defenceless. Sir Cedric, alongside the knights and mages of the kingdom, rallied the defenders, their spirits bolstered by the triumph of the ritual of remembrance. The castle's battlements became a fortress of light, standing defiant against the encroaching darkness. The battle that ensued was epic, a clash of light against shadow, of hope against despair. Cedric, his armor gleaming under the storm-darkened sky, led the charge, his sword alight with the magic of the dawnflower and the blessings of the beings he had encountered on his quest. The defenders of Evershade fought with a valor that echoed through the ages. Each blow struck against Marana's minions, a testament to their courage and their resolve to protect their kingdom and their princess. Marana, seeing her forces falter against the united front of Evershade's defenders, took to the battlefield herself. Her power was immense, shadows swirling around her like a tempest, spells of darkness cascading from her fingertips. Yet, for all her might, she found her match in Cedric, whose heart, pure and steadfast, became a beacon of light that pierced through the darkness. The duel between Cedric and Marana was a spectacle of magic and might, 
a dance of light and shadow that held the fate of Evershade in the balance. Cedric, drawing upon every ounce of skill, magic and wisdom he had garnered on his journey, stood unwavering in the face of Marana's onslaught. As the battle reached its crescendo, Cedric, with a cry that was both a challenge and a declaration of hope, struck a decisive blow, his sword channeling the collective hopes and dreams of Evershade into a single moment of brilliance. The light that erupted from the clash was blinding, a supernova of magic that washed over the battlefield, dispelling the shadows and breaking Marana's power. In the aftermath, as the light dimmed and the dust settled, Marana was gone, her darkness dissipated, a threat vanquished by the strength of Evershade's heart and the unbreakable bond between a knight and his princess. The kingdom stood victorious, the shadow of the witch's malice lifted, leaving behind a realm stronger and more united than ever before. The defenders of Evershade, with Sir Cedric at their fore, had not only saved their kingdom, but had also reclaimed the light that Marana had sought to extinguish. In the aftermath of the final battle, as the last of the darkness was swept away by the light of victory, the kingdom of Evershade erupted into celebration. The air, once heavy with the threat of eternal night, now buzzed with laughter and music. The streets adorned with banners and flowers, as if the very land itself sought to pay homage to the heroes who had fought for its dawn. Princess Lillian, her memories a tapestry once torn and now beautifully restored, stood at the heart of the festivities, her joy a beacon that lit up the faces of all who beheld her. Sir Cedric, knight and protector, friend and confidant, remained by her side, his own heart alight with the peace and happiness that had returned to the kingdom he loved. The royal court, with King Alaric and Queen Ilara at its head, declared a festival that would span seven days and seven nights, a celebration of Evershade's resilience and the indomitable spirit of its people. Minstrels and storytellers from across the land gathered, their songs and tales weaving the story of Cedric's quest and the breaking of the spell into the fabric of legend. Each day brought new festivities. Tournaments were held, showcasing the valour and skill of Evershade's knights, while mages performed wonders of light and colour the magic painting the sky with the hues of dawn and dusk. Artisans and craftsmen displayed their works, creations inspired by the tale of the dawnflower and the bond between knight and princess, a testament to the kingdom's flourishing spirit of inspiration and creativity. At the heart of the celebration was the feast, a grand affair that filled the great hall with the rich scents of roasted meats, sweet pastries and exotic spices. Tables groaned under the weight of the bounty as nobles and common folk alike gathered to break bread, their laughter and voices mingling in a harmony that echoed through the stone corridors of the castle. As night fell on the seventh day, the kingdom gathered in the castle's grand courtyard, where a bonfire was lit, its flames reaching towards the stars. Around this beacon, the people of Evershade danced, their movements a tapestry of shadow and light, a physical embodiment of the journey from darkness into dawn. Princess Lillian, taking Sir Cedric's hand, led him into the dance, their steps a reflection of the journey they had undertaken together. As they moved, the people of Evershade joined in, their circle widening, a symbol of unity and shared joy. And then, as the moon rose high and the fire burned low, 
King Alaric rose, his voice carrying across the courtyard. Let this celebration be a reminder, he proclaimed, of the strength that lies within us, the power of love and friendship to overcome darkness. Let the tale of Sir Cedric, of our beloved Princess Lillian, and of the Dawnflower bloom forever in the hearts of Evershade, hearts. The cheers that followed were a surge of collective joy and pride, a sound that would resonate in the annals of Evershade's history for generations to come. As the festivities drew to a close, the kingdom of Evershade stood renewed, its people united in a bond forged through adversity and triumph. The celebration was not just a marking of the witch's defeat and the breaking of the spell, but a testament to the enduring light of hope, love, and the unwavering spirit of those who believe in the dawn. As the final echoes of celebration faded into the tranquil silence of a kingdom at peace, the dawn of a new day broke over Evershade, painting the sky with strokes of pink and gold. It was in this moment, as the world awoke to the promise of a new beginning, that Princess Lillian and Sir Cedric found themselves alone, atop the highest tower of the castle, the land of Evershade stretching out before them, a tapestry of light and shadow, hope and renewal. The air was crisp, filled with the scent of the blooming gardens below and the gentle murmur of the kingdom stirring to life. As they watched the sun ascend, its rays kissing the earth and dispelling the last vestiges of darkness, Lillian and Cedric shared a moment of profound connection, a silent acknowledgement of the journey they had endured, the battles they had fought, and the unbreakable bond that had been forged between them. Cedric, looking upon Lillian, saw not just the princess he had sworn to protect, but the friend who had stood by him, whose strength and courage had inspired him to face the darkness. Lillian, in turn, saw in Cedric the knight who had been her anchor, her guide through the mists of forgetfulness and her steadfast defender against the forces that had sought to tear them apart. In the soft light of dawn, they spoke of the future, of dreams and aspirations, of the kingdom they would build together, one where the darkness of the past would be remembered not as a time of fear, but as the crucible that had tested and tempered their spirits, making them stronger, wiser, and more compassionate. As they shared their hopes for Evershade, a kingdom renewed by love and light, their hands found each other, their fingers entwining in a gesture that spoke volumes of their mutual respect, friendship, and the deeper feelings that had blossomed between them. It was a connection that transcended duty and obligation, rooted in genuine affection and the shared experiences that had bound their souls together. The sun, now fully risen, bathed them in its golden light, a benediction that seemed to bless their union and the path they would walk together. In this moment of serenity, amidst the beauty of the dawn, they embraced a symbol of hope and new beginnings, of the light that endures beyond the darkest night. And as they turned to face the day, hand in hand, their hearts light with the joy of a new dawn, they knew that whatever challenges the future might hold, they would face them together with the strength of their bond and the united spirit of Evershade guiding them forward. In the years that followed the breaking of the spell and the defeat of the witch Marana, the kingdom of Evershade entered an era of unparalleled prosperity and peace. Under the wise and benevolent reign of Princess Lillian, with Sir Cedric ever at her side as her knight and counsellor, the scars left by the darkness began to heal, 
and the kingdom blossomed like a garden in the spring. Ever shade, once shrouded in shadow, became a beacon of light, not just for its own people, but for all those who sought refuge from the darkness that lingered in the corners of the world. The tales of Lillian's courage and Cedric's unwavering loyalty and bravery spread far and wide, weaving into the fabric of legend, inspiring songs, stories, and even the dreams of those who heard them. Together, Lillian and Cedric embarked on a journey of restoration, rebuilding the kingdom not as it was, but as it could be, a realm where magic and might worked in harmony, where knowledge and wisdom were treasured as the greatest of riches, and where the well-being of every citizen was upheld as the highest law. The royal court became a place of learning and diplomacy, attracting scholars, magicians, and emissaries from distant lands. The knowledge exchanged in the halls of Evershade's castle sparked a renaissance of art, science, and magic that propelled the kingdom into a new age of enlightenment. But more than the prosperity, more than the peace, and the advancements that marked Lillian's reign. It was the love and the bond she shared with Cedric that became the heart of Evershade's legacy. Their partnership, founded on mutual respect, deep affection, and an unwavering commitment to their people, became a symbol of hope and unity for the kingdom. Each year, on the anniversary of the spell's breaking, Evershade celebrated the Festival of Light, a tradition that commemorated the dawn that had ended the longest night. It was a time of joy and reflection, a reminder of the darkness that had once been and of the light that had prevailed. Lillian and Cedric, standing side by side, would address their people, their words a pledge to continue serving the light, to nurture the peace that had been won with such great sacrifice. As decades turned to centuries, the tale of Princess Lillian and Sir Cedric, of their courage, their love, and the dawn they brought to Evershade, became immortalized in the annals of history. Statues were erected in their honor. Books were penned to recount their deeds and parents told their children of the knight and the princess who had faced the darkness and emerged victorious. And so, the legacy of Lillian and Cedric endured, a beacon of hope for future generations, a reminder that even in the darkest of times, there are those who will stand for the light, who will fight for love and peace. Their story, etched into the very soul of Evershade, became a guiding star, a light that would never fade, even as the world around it changed.